Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Real Sports Updates here. Back again with another video. Um, you see the title, you see the thumbnail. Let's get into it. Let's get inside the real numbers of the Derek Carr contract. <clears throat> now, a couple weeks ago, um, it was announced that Derek Carr re-signed with the Raiders, and everybody was going crazy because it was reported that Derek Carr signed a three-year, $121 million contract with the Las Vegas Raiders. Um, I've said it again, over and over and over again. The NFL contracts that you see, unless it is fully guaranteed, a la Deshaun Watson, there is a bunch of funny money in these contracts. And by funny money means, I mean that it is not guaranteed. This is money that is not guaranteed towards him. It is money that they will get if they are on the roster um, at a certain point in time. So upon signing this contract, this money is not guaranteed. There's only a certain amount that's guaranteed, right? So let's get into the numbers. I want to get into some of the numbers of this because I, I need people to understand that it is not, um, it is not what you think it is. And when you get into the numbers of the contract, there's teams who say that they love players and this guy's our future, this guy's that, whatever, blah, blah, blah. If the Raiders really felt strongly about Derek Carr, they would not even presented him this contract. Um, because in my opinion, it is disrespectful um, that you would even think this way, uh, you know, to think that Derek Carr is gonna come in and sign this contract. Um, I personally do not know why he did, um, but anything that the Raiders are telling you is BS. If they say that they're, they're, Derek Carr is their long-term starter, BS. Um, and I will explain that to you and I'll break it down um, when you get into the contract number. So the number for the total number, total value, right? Three years, 121 million. That is if Derek Carr plays um, under this entire contract and he is um, you know, given all this money that is allotted in the contract if he does uh, play. But these contracts are broken down um, you know, in, in terms that really protect the team, right? They don't, these teams want these guys to earn every single penny, right? And there's not, there's not too much wrong with that from, from the, the, the outlook of it, you know, just from the outside looking in. But when you look at a guy like Derek Carr, right? The Raiders organization last year, um, and just in general over the past 20 years or so, the Raiders organization has been the most dysfunctional, one of the most dysfunctional um, organizations in football. Right, um, Derek Carr gets, comes in, he gets drafted eight years ago, um, and he has been a constant there, right? And they haven't had good, they haven't had great teams and all that stuff, but week in, week out, the quarterback position is figured out because Derek Carr has it figured out, right? He's not a guy, he, he's, you know, as far as stats go, he's, he's, you know, middle of the pack and, and, and whatnot, but his impact on the team goes further than um, his stats say, right? It's his leadership, it's his ability to handle um, adversity, all of that stuff, um, you know, particularly last year. Last year was one of the craziest um, seasons I've ever seen a team have. The Raiders had a bunch of stuff going on, but the turmoil, um, you know, the John Gruden emails, the Henry Rugg situation, um, you know, there were several guys who got DUIs um, off season, during the season. There's just a whole lot of stuff going on. And the, franchise was going to come apart at the seams, right? It was going to come apart at the seams. The only person who held it together was Derek Carr. Um, and a lot of that is due to his his faith. You know, he's he's a, a um, very religious person. He has a lot of faith in, in God and stuff. And, you know, he, he pretty much lives his life that way. And he is, he's always a guy that's positive. Um, I've met him several times. I met him and his brother several times. Uh, David Carr, they're positive. Um, they give off po positive energy. You know, they, they speak words of wisdom. Um, and both of them are like wise beyond their years. And, you know, in a, as far as the football locker room goes, when you have a bunch of young knuckleheads, um, having guys like that in the locker room is really a godsend. You know, he keeps everybody together, right? And whether or not you are religious and you, you believe in God or not, um, to have somebody there a constant, you know, he is like the team father pretty much. You know, he's the guy that you don't want to disappoint. You know, he's a guy that comes in, gives you advice, right? Um, if you're going through something in your personal life, whatever, he's a guy you can sit down and talk to and he can give you advice or he can pray with you. He can, do, he can do all this stuff, right? He was a guy that kept the Raiders franchise together. And for the Raiders to present this contract to him is ridiculous. So we're gonna get into it. Um, so the total value, again, three years, $121 million. Um, the guaranteed money that Derek Carr will be paid this, this year is $24.9 million. That will be his uh, cap hit in uh, 2022, this coming season, right? So basically $25 million. So 
the following season, uh, 2023, um, his cap hit will be $35 million, right? But between the, this coming season of 2022 and between uh, the following season of 2023, the Raiders have an out. There's an out after one year of this contract. So his out is going to be $5.6 million dead cap if he is cut, right? $5.6 million dead cap if he's cut. And just, just to compare this to a situation that is uh, fresh in everybody's mind. Um, Carson Wentz with the deal that he signed. I'm not going to get in, into Carson Wentz's deal, but he signed a really big deal, right? Um, big average with the Eagles a couple years ago. The Eagles traded, when the Eagles traded Carson Wentz to the Colts last season, um, that cap hit, the dead cap hit that the Eagles were going to have to eat was $35 million. $35 million. And, you know, when this was being reported and, and when everybody was talking about Carson Wentz, um, you know, being traded and whatnot, a lot of people thought that that $35 million cap hit would stop a lot of teams from trading from Carson Wentz. It didn't stop the Colts. The Colts went and, you know, traded for Carson Wentz and the Eagles were more than willing to eat that $35 million. Now, you know, Carson Wentz and his current contract that he's on, you know, from, from him being traded to the, uh, the Colts, to the uh, Washington Commanders, now the Colts have to eat a uh, significant portion of dead cap in, in, uh, with uh, Carson Wentz's contract too. It's not 35 million, but they're still eating a significant amount of dead cap money. So one of the, the, the rumors and myths that I'm going to dispel is that teams are not willing to eat dead cap money or that teams are, you know, kind of bashful when it comes to that. If the Eagles will eat $35 million in dead cap money, the Raiders will certainly eat $5.6 million in dead cap money uh, from Derek Carr, you know, if they were to release him. So let's get that straight. So there is not um, a lot of job security for Derek Carr off this one year deal. For a guy who held your franchise together, there's not a lot of job security, right? If Derek Carr has an off year, right? If he doesn't pick up McDaniels, uh, Josh McDaniels' offense, um, if the team just in general is not, you know, playing well under McDaniels or if they go on a losing streak and they don't end up making the playoffs and all this stuff, Derek Carr is going to be gone. And, you know, you need to, if you're a Raider fan, you need to understand that. You need to come to terms with this. He's going to be gone because this is a disrespectful contract. And everybody, I'm a Charger fan. I've, I've made that clear in several videos. Um, but I, I, I am unbiased and I can, you know, speak about things that are true. And this contract is disrespectful to, to Derek Carr. It's very, very disrespectful. And I think he deserves better. I, I really do. I'm not a Raider fan by any stretch, but I think that he deserves better. This is not a suitable contract for a guy who has done so much for this franchise. $5.6 million and the Raiders can just get rid of him, uh, go in the draft, get a new quarterback, um, sign a new quarterback in, in, in free agency, whatever it is that they want to do. Um, but this, this, it, it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So his, the, the real contract is one year, $25 million, which he will be getting this following season. I just explained that he'll be getting $35 million in 2003. I mean, in 2023. And the following year after that, his uh, cap hit goes up to $43 million. Derek Carr is not going to see any of that money. He's, he will not. He will not. And also, if he has to be cut by February 15th of 2023, or his 2023 salary is guaranteed, plus $7.5 million of his 2024 salary, which is the $43 million. So the Raiders have really boxed themselves in. Um... They didn't do th they didn't do themselves any favors. They didn't do Derek Carr any favors. This contract really does not make a whole lot of sense at all. So, like I said, if Derek Carr has a bad year, if he if he is uh, struggling to pick up the offense or whatever, Derek Carr is gone. It, after the right after the Super Bowl is over, Derek Carr is going to be cut. This is February fifteenth. I don't know when the Super Bowl is going to be played next year. Maybe the um, you know it's obviously February the the. Uh, I think it's the second weekend in February, but sometimes the first, depending on what, but immediately after the Super Bowl, the Raiders are going to have to cut bait with Derek Carr. Anything pretty much short of a Super Bowl title. And I don't have the Raiders getting to the Super Bowl this year. Vegas doesn't have the Raiders getting to the Super Bowl this year. I don't think anybody has the Raiders getting to the Super Bowl this year, let alone winning the Super Bowl. So they 
are going to, and, and for all the, the Raider fans who are gonna come on this, this, this uh, you know, comment under the post and watch, watch my video and kind of comment under the post and say, oh no, the Raiders are gonna go. The Raiders are, are, are you know, committed to Derek Carr. They're committed in all this stuff. So a guy that makes $25 million guaranteed this year. So you're telling me that the Raiders are okay with his cap hit going up 10 more million next year. And having his salary for 2024 committed for 7.5 7 more million for the following season, which is 2024. So with the Raiders having to resign Darren Waller, um, Hunter Renfro, um, you know, Josh Jacobs. Uh, you, so you're telling me that this is going to happen. And plus the, the, the uh, salaries that the Raiders um, committed to this past offseason, right? The Max Crosby deal, the Chandler Jones deal, uh, the Devontae Adams deal. All of these salaries are going to be guaranteed. And they're all guaranteed at, at different points in time. But all of these are going to be guaranteed, right? You're going to have a, a good portion of your cap going to those guys who I just named. You're going to have Derek Carr making... 10 more million dollars than he made this uh, this coming season. And you're gonna resign Hunter Renfro. And you no, know, it's just not going to happen. They put themselves in a box with this contract and it doesn't make a lot of sense. This is why I like doing these kind of breakdown videos. I like jumping into the numbers because the NFL media, the Raiders, um, you know, even the some of the fans and people who comment on the NFL, comment on um, you know, these certain teams, they will tell you that these teams are in love with these players, they're in love with the quarterback, whatever. No, they are not. This is terrible. This is one of the most, if not the most uh, disrespectful quarterback contract I've ever seen, right? You have Derek Carr. This guy has literally saved your franchise. He saved your franchise from becoming a embarrassment. You know, what the Raiders were all of pretty much the 2000s, all right? Derek Carr has saved you. You look at a guy juxtaposed, right? And I like Deshaun Watson, but juxtaposed to Deshaun Watson, five years, $230 million, you know, off of his 22 pending lawsuits. Th this is the best you can do for Derek. I, it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And for them to say that they are committed to him, it just doesn't make a lot of sense. It does not make a lot of sense. And I, I know that the Raiders wanted Derek Carr to take a little less because Devontae Adams is there um, and they did make some free agent signings, but this is just... Come on, man! This is this is ridiculous. This is this is ridiculous. It, it is just it's complete caca. I, I I don't I have no words for this. Um, I I just don't think that the Raiders are doing themselves any favors. They're not doing good business. This is not good business. Who even if they were to get rid of Derek Carr after this year, right, and eat this five point six million dollars, what quarterback wants to come do business with? Them? I don't know. I don't know. And if you're a Raider fan too. This is the biggest thing that, if I was a Raider fan, this is the biggest thing that, it, that would concern me. The new head coach, the new GM. Both these guys come from New England. Both of these guys are not great people, um, you know, people, people, uh, uh, guys. They don't deal well with people. They, all of these guys try to emulate Bill Belichick and it doesn't work, right? Only Bill Belichick can be that, that grumpy and that um, callous and, and, you know, cold and calculated and all that stuff. That works when you have won six Super Bowls. Uh, Josh McDaniels hasn't won six Super Bowls as a head coach. Josh McDaniels was the offensive coordinator for Tom Brady, right? And I guess, you know, maybe you give him some points for that. But we've seen this before. We have empirical data that tells us that not only will, you know, New England coaches, Bill Belichick's coaching tree, not only do they not work out, but we have empirical data um, from a superstar quarterback, a Hall of Fame quarterback, a Hall of Fame quarterback's offensive coordinator not working in the NFL, right? Anybody remember Adam Gase? Anybody old enough remember Adam Gase, right? Remember the Peyton Manning year? You know, he broke all the all the touchdown records. He broke the passing yards, uh, passing yardage record. Um, you know, he was just rolling. Everybody was, was on Denver real big. Who was the offensive coordinator of that team? Adam Gase. And I remember watching all of the shows. When once the season was over, I remember watching all the shows. All of these teams wanted to hire Adam Gates. Everybody wanted to interview with Adam Gates. Everybody. They want to speak to Adam Gates. They want to speak to Adam Gates. This team wants to speak to Adam Gates. Adam Gates, what happened with Adam Gates? He got two jobs and he was terrible. He was terrible. He was awful. He, he was awful in Miami. He was a, a, a bad guy from all accounts. He didn't know how to talk to his players. Um, he was standoffish. Uh, uh, you know, introverted, you know, some people will say as well, too. And I don't know how you're an introvert as an NFL head coach when you have to lead the 53 grown men out on the field every Sunday, but 
you know, that's what he was in Miami. Failed, got hired immediately in New York and failed even bigger. And now he is persona non grata in a lot of uh, organizations. He can't even get a job as like an offensive assistant. Like nobody wants to be around this guy. We've seen this happen before. Peyton Manning ran his own show. Peyton Manning is the guy who is responsible for all of his success. It's not the offensive, it's not the offensive coordinator. Peyton Manning was calling his own plays. We heard on Pat, Pat McAfee show, um, you know, Pat McAfee played with, with, with Peyton Manning for several years and he talked about, you know, his practices, his practice habits. He was the one pretty much running practice. You know, the head coach, the offensive coordinator was sitting by watching him, overseeing everything, but he was the one running the practices. Josh McDaniels is in the same boat. We've seen that Josh McDaniels can't coach. We've seen what he did in Denver. Josh McDaniels is going to have personnel say in, in, in Las Vegas. Josh McDaniels is the one who made Tim Tebow a first-round pick. Josh McDaniels can't coach. We've seen Josh McDaniels uh, play call uh, for the, the, the St. Louis Rams at the time. Terrible. Josh McDaniels has done nothing outside of Tom Brady. Nothing. He's done absolutely nothing outside of Tom Brady. And unless Tom Brady is walking through the door, I don't expect Josh McDaniels to have any success in Las Vegas because his uh, press conference sounds, you know, real good. And, you know, I learned how to deal with people and all this stuff and blah, blah, blah. Really? We'll see about that. We will see about that because the Raiders job is not only is it one of the most difficult jobs on the field because you have to get a, a, a team that is not used to winning, right? A team that's not used to winning very much. You know, they made the playoffs last year, but aside from that, they haven't they haven't done anything. Not only is it a job to get them to go and have success in a loaded AFC West, but it is also a job that has a lot attached to it, right? John Madden coached there, right? Even though John Gruden was, you know, he, he's left on bad terms. John Gruden was just a coach there, right? John Gruden is it was a people guy. Right, you know, he's on TV and all that stuff. He was a people guy. Now you get somebody in the building who is completely the opposite of John Madden, completely the opposite of a, of a John uh, Gruden. This guy is a snake, right? He has a really bad reputation in the league. He does not, um, you know, he, he, he uh, shunned the Colts a couple years ago, right? He took the job and reneged on it. And, you know, he is a guy, his, his reputation precedes him. And if things start to snowball, if things start to go bad in Las Vegas, right? If, like I said, if there's a two, three, four game losing streak or whatever, the wheels can come off, really, with, with Josh McDaniels. Josh McDaniels is not a guy I would trust. And if I was a player there, I wouldn't trust him. You know, he's got a long record of, uh, you know, telling players that they're great, or whatever, and then cutting them the, the very next day. There's a few guys, uh, you know, who have experiences with him, you know, based off of his, uh, um, you know, his overall just snakiness and, you know, sliminess and, 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 and grease ball, you know, grease ball uh, uh, level type of uh, uh, guy that he is. You know, there's a lot of guys who have experience with that on the Broncos, um, a couple on the Rams too. This guy has been bad mouth. His name has been dragged through the mud, um, you know, over and over and over again. And there's plenty of YouTube videos. Go ahead, go and watch them and look them up. You know, this guy does not have a stellar reputation whatsoever. So he's got a battle against that. He's got a battle in a loaded AFC West. Um, and now he has a quarterback on a lame duck contract, right? A quarterback that everybody in the building likes and a quarterback that everybody in the building respects. You're going to lose the locker room if you let Derek Carr go. And this contract bears it out. This contract tells you how the Raiders feel about Derek Carr. This tells you how Josh McDaniels feels. This tells you how the GM Dave Ziegler feels about Derek Carr. They don't believe in him. And I don't know what they're going to do um, at quarterback. You know, my guess is that they play this year out, they cut Derek Carr, and then they go back into the draft. Um, but if they expect to have any success this season, they're not going to have a high draft pick. Maybe they maybe they trade up into the draft. Maybe they draft um, Bryce Young out of Alabama. Maybe, you know, but we'll see. And it, this is just going to be a mess. I think that this is going to be a mess. I don't think that the Raiders are handling business uh, properly. This is a very bad sign if you're a Raider fan. Um... And, you know, like I said, it's just disrespectful. This contract is disrespectful. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Um, you know, and people need to understand this. If you're a Raider fan, you need to understand this. And if the wheels come off, I am going to repost this video and I'm not going to have people watch this because I'm calling it out now because, you know, I heard the news and I knew that I was going to do a video on this and I just, you know, kind of took my time and then 
you know, I kind of, you know, did my research on the on the the contract, and my eyes popped, and I I, I really couldn't believe what I was seeing. Um, but hey, you know, it is it, it it is what it is, right? This is how the Raiders do business. Um, you know, Mark Davis, you know, for him to, to to give power and personnel say to you know Josh McDaniels and Ziggler, um, it, it you know I I just I really. If you're a Raider fan, I don't know. And and if the Raiders have success and they, you know, all of this stuff is 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 uh, you know, everything that I'm saying is wrong, whatever, I can come out here, I, I will come on here and say, hey, I was wrong. I, I you know, I was wrong about it. But I don't think that I'm gonna be wrong because these contracts will tell you what these teams feel about players. And unless a player is willing to take a really, really, really bad deal, it will tell you how they feel about him. And you know, they their car was not drafted by them. Their car was under two administrations previous to them. So he is not their guy, you know. And you know, I'm I'm sure that you know they they want him there this season because the the quarterback room is settled. You know who's going to start. You know who's going to go out there and you know be under center for you. You know all 17 weeks. But as far as the long term status of this goes, it just does not look good. It doesn't look good for Derek Carr. It doesn't look good for the Raiders. Um, and it really puts them, you know, with all their talent that they've acquired um, this offseason, it really puts them in a hole. And it puts a lot of pressure on them to succeed right away in a loaded AFC West where a lot of people, they are, the AFC West clearly is, is you know, the best team, uh, best division in, in uh, the NFL. The Raiders might be the worst team in the AFC West, just when you consider all, you know, everything. Coaching, um, you know, the, the roster from 1 to 53, they might be the worst, right? So even though they are, I think they're gonna be a, a, a pretty decent team, but they are gonna be the worst team in their division. They certainly have the worst quarterback in their division. Um, and Derek Carr is a good quarterback, but Mahomes, Russell Wilson, Justin Herbert are above him. They're, they are superior to, to Derek Carr. So this really puts the Raiders in a bad spot. Um, like I said, it puts Derek Carr in a bad spot. And if the Raiders, if you don't believe in him, just let him go play somewhere else. Um, let him let him go to, to to New Orleans and have success. Let him lead the, you know the 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 Saints to the playoffs. Let him go somewhere else, man. I I just don't understand. Why do you want to play games like this? Why do you want to just kind of drag him along? It's, it's not fair, it, and it doesn't make any sense. And if things go really really bad, a lot of people are gonna look to this contract and say, well, they didn't believe in him to, to begin with. And I'm here telling you guys first that they don't believe in Derek Carr, and it it, it sucks because he really has um you know. He succeeded against all odds um, in Oakland slash Las Vegas. He's dealt with a lot of craziness in that organization. A lot of, un, you know, just unstable characters, you know, from coaches to other players to, you know, the Antonio Brown situation. He's dealing with crazy head cases. It's just, you're asking Derek Carr to do a lot and to give him this contract just doesn't make any sense. There would be no way in hell if I was Derek Carr that I would even consider signing this. I'm going to go talk to the Saints. I'm going to go talk to... Um, you know, whoever, I'm going to go talk to the Seahawks. I'm going to go talk to a team that needs a quarterback because this is just BS. This is BS. And without success, I mean, w w without, uh, um, you know, a long-term commitment from the Raiders, um, I, I just don't think Derek Carr is going to be, you know, I, I, I think he's going to be a little, um, timid. I think he's going to be a little more, um, you know, under pressure to succeed, you know, it, and it might lead to him taking more chances or whatever. And, you know, it just doesn't really make sense for me. Um, it, it's it's sad, but I, I kind of wanted to break this down because I wanted people to see, um, and I wanted Raider fans to see. I see a lot of Raider fans online. Oh yeah, you know, no, no, your team does not believe in your quarterback. You you guys obviously love your quarterback and you should because, um, you know, he he's he, he's a baller. He, he can ball, Derek Carr can ball. Um, but the Raiders just, for whatever reason, you know, this new regime does not feel him the way that y'all feel him. So, um, and it sucks that, you know, to, to, to see that, but it is, you know, this is what the Raiders do. The Raiders do things that don't make sense sometimes. But um, I, just, I just wanted to break this down for everybody. Um, understand what it is. Understand what this real contract is. Understand that this is not um, obviously what's being reported. It's not what's being reported, but the contract uh, terms are clear and when you go and you look at it um, you will understand that uh, everything is not what it seems right so that's pretty much all I got for this one guys um, just just wanted to break this down um, 
you know, uh, another team in the AFC West. You know, I do a lot of Charger content, but I wanted to break this Raider situation down. I wanted to break down the Derek Carr contract because um, this needs to be talked about. So um, that's it. That's pretty much all I got for this one. Um, I'll definitely be back with more content soon. NFL Draft Week is uh, approaching. And um, I'm going to do some more draft content and stuff. And um, that's all I got for, for now. Um, until next time, uh, thank you for your support. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Um, and until next time, I'll see you later.